Hey everybody, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and welcome. I believe this is episode six of Whip Wednesday, Work in Progress Wednesdays where I come live right here on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel and chat with you about a project that I'm working on. So we're gonna get into this baby quilt in a minute, but let me just double check, make sure technology is working well. Make sure I can hear myself and all the things. All right, can you hear me well over there, Brent? Yep, sounds great. All right, awesome. So go ahead and drop me a comment in the chat if you're watching live or in the comment section if you're watching the recording here. Let me know where you are tuning in from. I am in my home studio in North Central Florida and I post instructional video tutorials right here on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. If you're new, go ahead and click the subscribe button so you can stay in the know of what is going on, new tutorials, live events like this one, and that way we can, you know, spend some time together, chit chat back and forth, and discuss some different crafty projects. Now, I like to do all the things from sewing to quilting to hand embroidery and knitting, crochet, all that stuff. So I often share different things about all the different crafts and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, lifestyle type things that I'm into. We live on a five acre homestead here in North Central Florida. So we garden, we milk cows, we do all that stuff. So if you're interested in any or all of the things I just mentioned, make sure that you click the subscribe button and that you enable the little bell icon so that you will get individual notifications every time we post a new video, we go live, all that stuff. All right. Hey, everybody. We got Deborah tuning in from Port St. Lucie, Crafty Ferret Mama from Alabama. Wow. We have Sriniti tuning in from India. We have Willow from Ohio. Oh, awesome, awesome. Hey, Pat. We have a neighbor who lives in Gainesville, Florida tuning in. I'm so glad that you all can make it. So we are gonna get started shortly. We're gonna talk about this little baby quilt that I'm working on here. And so if you've been watching Whip Wednesdays for the last couple of weeks, you know that I've been working on this baby quilt. We made some blocks. These are called peak blocks, like P-E-A-K, and they are made using five inch pre-cut fabric squares and my five inch slicer ruler. So anytime we talk about products or tools and things, you can always find links to them in the description box below the video player here on YouTube. So my five inch slicer ruler is a ruler I designed about five years ago, specifically to be used with five inch pre-cut squares of fabric. So this was just one little stack. And I had a few more blocks, but I wanted it to give it this shape, so I kind of left them out. So just know that if you have one stack of five inch squares, you're not gonna make an entire quilt. Obviously the squares are too small, and because we cut into them and then piece them together, we are able to create different designs, but at the same time we're shrinking the fabric down as well, right? So this is basically the, the, the chunk of patchwork pieces that I was able to make with the peak blocks that I made with the five inch slicer. Now, we recently were talking about figuring out what I was gonna do to make it bigger, of course, because this little bit is not quite enough. Now, if you have specific questions on this project or quilting things that I'm uh, kind of touching on as I discuss this, go ahead and leave them in the chat. I have my phone here so that I can tune in and make sure uh, that I can answer some of these questions. Let's take the first one here. We have Kat is asking, how do you make a quilt design wall? This is a very uh, low tech way to make a design wall. This is just a piece of batting. Now I have, uh, and I just have them like 3M command strip taped up to the corners up top there. You can also kind of cut it really nice and flush to a perfect rectangle and tape it down like on all four corners. I just need it to hang. I have used multiple different types of battings in years past, right? I've always done it this way. In my other studio, I just like push pinned the batting into the wall. If you don't care about making holes right into your drywall, uh, you can do that too, okay? So a lot of different options. What I find works best for me, and this is, of course, I have a large chunk of batting like this, not because I bought a pre-cut piece. Those can get pricey, right? You buy those usually if you're making a specific quilt for a certain size, but I buy them by the roll so I have enough, right? So I can just roll out a big chunk here and just tape it up on the two corners. Um, this is, I believe, let me see. This is, okay, so this is Quilter's Dream Select Batting, which is the mid-weight. Uh, it's 100% cotton, it's USA made, USA grown, it's like a family company. So this is the batting that I prefer to use for my quilts. And there's two different thicknesses. We sell them in the online shop. Uh, and I sell the two thicknesses that I use most. Request, which is their thinnest loft, and then select, which is this one. So when it's really, really thin, I don't like to kind of extend it and stretch it down like that because I can distort it since it's such a lightweight batting. But the lightweight, that request uh, thickness or weight 
is great for uh, warmer climates. So we live in Florida. When we make quilts here for babies or for us or for whatever, I like to use that thinner one. The Select is kind of your base mid-weight loft, okay? And so for this application, I like to use the mid-weight because it's more substantial and the, the squares tend to stick to it better. Now, cotton batting is more expensive than polyester batting. You probably already knew that. But I have used, before I didn't really buy cotton batting when I didn't have um, money to be spending on big rolls of cotton batting. So I use polyester. And I would use, um, I did use Quilter's Dream, their, their polyester batting uh, in those days. And then you can also use a blend of them. So sometimes at your big box craft stores, you can find like an 80-20 blend, meaning 80% cotton and a 20% polyester. I've used them all from 100% polyester, 80-20 blend, and 100% cotton, and I've always used them like this for my design wall. So hopefully that helps. It's just literally a chunk of batting push pin to the wall. Now, I know some people like to use um, those inexpensive table covers that have like the felt backing on it. For me, those usually tend to be like a square that's not big enough for me to lay out blocks and patchwork pieces on say a queen size quilt. So I just prefer to use the wider, like 90 inch wide batting or 60 inch wide batting and just push pin it or tape it up to my wall. So hopefully that helps. Okay, great question. I get that a lot. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so yeah. Uh, Bernadine says the flannel works well for the design too. Absolutely. So if you're using something that's 100% cotton and it's like not super duper thin, if it has like a little bit of grab to it, the quilting cotton fabric on your Patrick pieces tends to just stick to it. And so a lot of times I'll do stuff and people will say, and I'll show you when we start talking about the borders, like I'll just like swap out another block and I'll get comments and emails of people saying like, how are you sticking them there? I'm like, they just, they just stay. It just stays. There's nothing. I didn't spray adhesive it on here or nothing. I just put it on and just smooth it. And it just stays. It's my favorite way to design quilts and work with the layouts once I have my blocks done and all that. Hi, Anna, tuning in from Miami, my hometown. What's up? 305. Um, Heather says, what I need to do is find that big blank space for the wall in her house. This is true. So you do need to have space. But one of my friends had done something similar where she got... Um, I don't know the exact name of these boards, but they sell them at the hardware store. They're like foam insulation, like a thin board, maybe like half inch or three quarter inch thick. And she put a couple of them together and then wrapped that and staple gunned the batting to it. So she was able to kind of slide that in two pieces because the I, I believe the, the foam insulation panels were maybe two or three feet wide or something like that. But if you put two of them, then you get a way bigger piece, right? By the height that you cut it at. And so she was able to separate them and like slide it in a closet under her bed. And whenever she was designing her quilt and laying out her blocks, she would pull it out. Okay, so that is another option so that you kind of make a makeshift wall and just lean it up on something uh, when you're at that step in the quilt making process. Okay, great. Kat says that that was really helpful. Glad to help. Awesome. Okay, so let's talk about this. So I went ahead and already sewed top and bottom borders, and this is how I like to do it. I'm not working on a mitered border here. I'm not gonna go over the top for a baby quilt. It's not that serious. But when I do attach just straight borders like this, I like to attach them in, in order, like parallel sides, one after the other, okay? Meaning, if I have a square or rectangle here for like this main piece, say this is your quilt top and you're adding a border around the whole thing. In my case, I'm adding borders to make this bigger. So it's at least a baby quilt, crib quilt size, you know, decent instead of just a small panel. So I add, if I add a border to the top, I'm going to add the one to the bottom because that way then the side borders can be attached here and here and they're going to span the full length of this and this, obviously including the top and bottom borders. Now, if I want it to be like a perfectly framed border with the center panel in the middle, yes, the widths of the strips that I'm using for the borders would be the same. I'm a little bit more asymmetrical than that, so we're going to play around with some different strips that I cut to see what type of a layout I like. You also do not have to add the same width border on top and bottom. I could have added a narrow one here and a chunkier one at the bottom. And basically what that's going to do when we frame it out is that it makes the, the visual of this panel be offset, right? Because if a border on this side is way wide and over here is narrow, it's going to look like this panel, instead of being in the center, is offset a little bit. So we'll, we'll play around with some strips now. Let me grab the first one so that um, 
so that we can kind of see what I'm talking about and explain this a little bit more. Let's see if I have any other questions, comments here. Um, Linda says, were those boards called foam core? They can be a foam core board. I mean, you probably want to get something a little bit thicker because those skinny ones that you can get in like the craft section that kids use a lot for like school projects and stuff tend to um, bend quite easily. So just look for something more substantial or I guess you could even glue a couple of them together just so you have something a little bit thicker that's not going to bend back on you. But I don't really know. I Foam core insulation boards, something like that. Try looking for some words like that. All right. So, all right. Hey, Brandy. She says, hi from Virginia. Love all the quilts you do. All right. So Jennifer says they're called foam insulation board or blue board or blue board. Okay. So that's the term, the, the actual name and term for it. All right. So I have cut out a couple strips here. First, let's go ahead and measure. Let me grab my little clip and slide measuring tape. And I'm just going to measure here to here to see, right, the length of this. What I would need to have a border here that measures. And it is about... Doo -doo -doo, Almost 38 inches. Okay, so I have a strip here, and I think I cut this one to four inches. So say I place this one here, and it measures about the same length. That's okay if it's a little longer. I usually will piece it and then go ahead and square up the corners, you know? So any little bit that extends past is not really going to be affected. And I hope that you can see that. Can you see that bottom corner here to where it extends a little bit past? Yeah, I think so. Okay, great. So if I wanted it to be a narrow little quilt like this, and this is more, I think, of like a baby mat or like a wall hanging for a nursery or something like that, if I were to finish it off right here, then I guess it would work for a little baby, right? But once they're a little bit older, it's not going to be um, very big at all. But say I wanted it to be equally balanced and everything symmetrical, then I would add another uh, border strip the same width as this one to here, right? And you can kind of probably visualize how that would look. But like I said, I'm a little bit more asymmetrical. So we're going to play around with some chunkier borders to see visually what this does to that center Patrick panel that we made with those peak blocks. And, and I'll talk a little bit about this outside fabric. So you might, some of you might maybe don't like this. I like this because the kind of the interest is here in this pastel area, really cute for a baby quilt, I think. But if I keep going with this white and pale gray theme, for me, it's just going to get tore up. I mean, they're going to spill so much stuff and spit and this and that. And it's just going to get dirty really, really quick. So I wanted to choose instead some of the darker colors that were in here. I could have gone with more charcoal or darker gray. But I did have this fabric left in my stash. This is actually a Moda Grunge. And if you're familiar with Moda Grunge, you know that this stuff works for everything. Like you can have a traditional quilt design. You can go modern. This is some of the fabric that we used in, back in February of this year on my quilting cruise. We made a quilt that featured this fabric. So it's gorgeous. Look at it. And so it, it is darker, obviously, than this because they're not from the same collection or anything. But it still features the same blues in several different shades throughout in kind of a more modeled, textured look, and then some of the greens. So I kind of like that, and the fact that it was a little bit darker, I think, would go good. So that's the, the, the fabric, okay? So Moda Grunge is what I'm using for that. All right. Hey, that guy from Texas. Thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it. <laughs> so this is the, the fabric that I chose to go with. And now I'm only probably going to keep one border, no matter how what I end up going with, right? But one border for this quilt. And then remember, sometimes people like to add multiple borders. For me, even if I'm only adding one fabric around the interior patchwork panel that we created here, uh, the binding is still like another binding, right? Or, excuse me. The binding is still like another border. It will continue to frame this out. So for me, sometimes when I feel like I add one fabric around, I feel like oh, I just need like a little pop of something else then I will keep that in mind so that when I choose my binding fabric, I will use that here because then it will kind of trim this out, right, when the whole quilt is completed. But I kind of like that. Let's take some measurements and see if this is even going to be, you know, decent enough size to be a baby quilt. And, of course, this is up to you. I get this a lot. People are like, is this going to make me a baby quilt or a crib size quilt? The dimensions are up to you. 
especially for something like this, where I'm making do with what I had. I used one five inch square stack, used my five inch slicer, chopped them up, made a bunch of peak blocks, and now this is what I ended up with. Now I need to figure out, well, what do I want it to be longer, wider? Do I want it to be a perfect square, right? So when you're designing your own thing, you come up with your own dimensions. There are some kind of rule of thumb, uh, usual crib size dimensions and stuff, but you can change that up any way you want to. I mean, nobody's gonna get a quilt as a gift for their baby and say like, it's not exactly this size for whatever they need it for. It's just a quilt. Use it somehow, some way, no matter the shape, right? So I kind of like the way that that looks with this wider one. And this one, I think it was cut nine inches and this is four inches, so you can see. Some of you might be like twitching because it's not symmetrical, but you know, you gotta embrace that part of it too. I like to play around with stuff. So let's, oh, let me take some measurements. So we said this was about 38 inches, which is not bad. If it was a rectangle, it was like 38 by 45 or something like that, that's okay for a crib size, I mean, uh, for a baby quilt. So let's measure somewhere here across the center-ish. And of course, we're gonna deduct half an inch here and half an inch here because these are not yet sewn. So this is not really a true and accurate representation of the actual finished dimension, right? But just to get an idea. So this is about, it's just at 35. So 35 minus another inch. So 34 inches it would measure this way. So it's longer than it would be wide if I added this nine inch border. But let's take this guy away and let's go ahead and add a wider one. Gloria says she loves the border color. Thank you. It'll last longer, I think. And it, and it goes good. This can be for anybody, you know, boy or girl, anything. Okay. And this is something that I consider also when I'm looking at borders, when it's just like an uninterrupted piece of fabric that I'm incorporating into the quilt design. I look to see like whether it's just a plain solid fabric. If it's just solid, I may want to then be thinking like, I do want it to feature a plain solid fabric because of the idea that I have for the quilting on it. And I really want then the quilting to sing, right? So that's one option. Go with a plain or kind of just non-busy background of a solid fabric so that you can do something fun with the quilting on it. Or in this case, and in most print design cases, like a different design prints on the fabric itself, I like the way that this modeled kind of grunge fabric is, like lighter bits here, darker of the green, like it's just like all over the place texture. So really for no matter what I decide to do, decide to do for the quilting, it's gonna look amazing on here because it's gonna blend in beautifully, it adds some texture, and it also looks kind of dirty, so it's like, any messes and in-between washes, I think it'll still look great, okay? So this was a 12 inch wide chunk. And I'm looking at myself here on the camera and I kind of like the way that looks. So you see how this panel has now been like, doop, shifted off to the side? I kind of like the way that that looks. Let's take some measurements and see what, well, we said 34, so if I added three more inches, it would be more like around 37 minus the, let's see. So this is more like, uh, 38 and a half and take away the one inch. So it would be like 37 and a half by 38. So right now, the way that it is, it would almost be like a perfect square. So if I wanted it to be more of a rectangle, you have a couple different options, right? How do you want the center panel to be displayed? If I want it to be more rectangular in shape this way, then I'm gonna have to probably take away one of these borders and add a wider chunk, whether it's up top here or both top and bottom. So maybe I shouldn't have sewn those on. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm one of those people where like, if I see fabric, I buy it just because I like it without a project in mind. And the same thing works as I go designing the projects. I let every step of the process kind of dictate what I'm going to do next. So, I mean, this is nothing. It'll take me, you know, 25 seconds to rip out the seam. But if I want it to be longer this way, that's where I'm going to have to add the length. And, and of course, you always have the option of like sewing all this together to have it be a square and then going back and attaching more borders, top and bottom. But I said, I only want to include this one fabric as the border and then I'll worry about the binding after. So if I wanted it to be rectangular, right, with the lengthwise or the longest dimension going this way, then I'm still in time for that, right? Assuming you have more fabric, I could add a wider chunk here and a wider chunk here. So let's remove this one. Vicky says asymmetrical makes me twitchy. Embrace it, girl. Embrace it. It's super fun. And once you do it, then you, it almost like frees you up for the next project, for the next project, for the next project. So this makes it a little bit wider this way. 
okay? So there, because this is 9 inches and this is 12, it's not exactly in the center, but I feel like it's too similar to make it really off kilter like I want it. So, and I hope this is helpful for y'all. Maybe you're learning something different or thinking of things to consider in your next project. I kind of just want to walk through how I think of things and, and I let it kind of tell me what I want to do or what it wants me to do next. Brenda says, put the wider strip on the opposite side. Oh, well, that's what I just did, I think. I, I, I'm reading this comment after I think I did that. All right. Uh, Jennifer says, I always forget how long it takes to put multiple borders on. My long arm quilter reminds me that you can distort your quilt if you're not measuring your borders. Absolutely. Okay. Everything in quilting builds on itself. From how I cut this little piece to how I sewed these two together to how I sewed this one to here to how I sewed this row to here, everything builds, 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 builds. So the more accurate you can be from step one, the better chances you have to, as you work your way throughout creating the quilt top and beyond for it to be, you know, a better outcome. Okay. All right. And what I don't want to do, this is one thing. If I wanted to add more length this way, and I already have these borders sewn on, some of you might be thinking, well, just add another strip down here. I personally do not like the way that that looks because it's gonna be a break in the design and it's the same fabric. It's kind of like when you look at it, you're like, why is there a separate seam there when she used the same fabric? If I'm using different fabrics, then of course, it's a given that we're gonna see a different seam, right, wherever that join was. But for me, if I was gonna add something down here, I would take this seam out and then um, add a, a wider chunk at the bottom so that it's more continuous across the full panel uh, anytime that we have a new join, okay? But I really like, it's funny how this is the light part of this quilt, and because we have a darker border around it, it kind of almost draws your eye in to where the pastel colors are. And so we're playing here with contrast, right? Because the whole center, even though this and this block, let's say this is the light fabric and this background is the dark, in the grand scheme of the whole quilt design, the whole center is light and the whole border is dark. So that's kind of fun. All right, let's see. Oh, Shanika says she loves this. I'm glad, girl. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. All right, let's see. Susan says, what about the bigger on the bottom and left? So remember I said, if I'm adding the bigger ones, I'm going to have to take out the seam here. And I probably will do that. Are y'all curious to see what I end up doing with this for next week so I can show you all where we're at? But this is something that's super fun and it will be, I mean, it's fun now making it and constructing it, but I think the super fun part is going to be quilting it because you can go any which way you want with quilting this quilt and it's still going to look good. I mean, personally, this is, this is kind of like the go-to for a lot of people. They'll say like, oh, well, I'm just going to stitch in the ditch of every one of these triangles. No, I would not do that. It would take a super long, we're going to have a lot of backtracking, and there are so many seam connections here that I do not want to have any bobbles with stitching in the ditch. For some odd reason, everybody, every beginner, almost every beginner, beginning quilter, seems to think like, oh, I'm just going to stitch in the ditch. Like, that's easy. <laughs> stitching in the ditch is not easy, y'all, because it depends on which way the seam allowance is pressed to. And when you have multiple intersections, they can be going different ways. So it's like you're riding in the ditch. And then all of a sudden, because the next patchwork piece has uh, the, the seam allowance going in a different direction. Now you're on top of the fabric instead of being in the ditch. It's tricky. Okay. And it's not that super simple. So for me, I don't even know how I'm going to quilt this, but we'll get there when we get there. But when you have large and like vast expanse of just plain fabric like this, that's my favorite space to quilt in because you can do anything. You can keep it super simple and just do lines. You can tack it in a few places and then you can also get super wild and do all kinds of intricate, um, dense quilting designs because it's like a blank canvas. So this is going to be fun for me to see how I end up quilting it. But, um, Looking at this, I'm trying to decide, do I want it to be, I mean, I want it to be rectangular for sure, but I'm trying to see if I want it rectangular this way with the peaks going up, or do I want it rectangular this way so that the peaks are going up, but like the top of the quilt is wider. Hmm. I don't know yet. And that's part of the quilting process. It's kind of like, I, I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. Have you gone into a fabric shop before and you're buying fabric and, and they ask you like, what are you going to make with this? <laughs> That's like the worst question ever. Um, I'm like, I, I don't know. I just buy fabric because I like it. All right. Anne says, yes, I want to see how this quilt winds up. 
Uh, Linda says, I can't wait to see when you get it done. I think it's, and it's fun. I think it's also a learning process. Even if you're not yet a quilter or maybe you're moving right now and all your stuff is in boxes. I think for someone who likes to do all these crafts and I watch a lot of videos and listen to things, just seeing and listening to me talk about my process, I think is helpful for people so that you don't feel like, Oh, I had this design immediately. As soon as I picked up the five inch square pack of fabric and my five inch slicer, I knew what the quilt was gonna look like. That's definitely not me. I'm not that kind of quilter. <laughs> I will change my mind up to the last second, okay? Uh, let's see. Ashley says she has fabric ready uh, for the projects. Amy says she thinks fat borders on top and bottom and skinnier ones on the side. That will definitely give you, that's a quick and easy way to make it rectangular this way. Um, I think that's how our mind just tends to go, right? With quilts, you think rectangle because you think a bed, right? A comforter, duvet, you're just thinking lengthwise and like if you're standing at the foot of the bed looking at it vertically this way. So I think I may do that. So that means I do have to rip out these seams. So I will rip out maybe one and just add a chunkier bit to the top and longer strips on the side. We'll see, but I'll definitely tune you all in the next time um, I get on here to see what exactly we are gonna do with this. All right, let me see if I have any other questions. Anne is asking, Vanessa, do you teach machine quilting the layers together? I do in a few different ways. I have an online quilt club um, that I offered last year. It's still available for people to join. We go through a bunch of different projects, different blocks, uh, kind of a mystery quilt. And then I show different techniques on how to piece uh, or put the layers together to quilt. I also have, I believe it's six or seven video part series on free motion machine quilting here on my YouTube channel. So another quick tip that I like to share. If you're ever looking for a free video tutorial that I have done, all you need to do is go to youtube.com type in crafty Gemini and then words, whatever the keywords are of what you're looking for. So in your case, um, I believe your name was Anne. Yes, Anne. You would go youtube.com in the search box, type in crafty Gemini and then type in free motion quilting. And any videos that I have done on free motion quilting will pop right up for you. And that way you can watch those playlists. I show you how to set up the machine, tips and tricks, different exercises and stuff like that. So I do have different um, options for that. Garnet says, this has been so amazing to watch and learn. I continue to enjoy your enthusiasm, explanations and teaching techniques. Thank you, Garnet. We appreciate you for sure. Thanks for tuning in. Marsha says she wants to see how I quilt it, please. Chris says, I would add a gray border, fat borders on top and bottom and a thinner gray on the side. That would look really good. And it would totally blend and be kind of that more monochromatic look because there's so much white and grays in different shades in the center. Um, I'm kind of committed to this mode of grunge though. So I gotta work with this. <laughs> um, Rose is asking, do you have any extra blocks to add in the corner borders? So I don't, I had a few. Um, I set them aside, but to tell you the truth, because these are not square, remember the little ones as we, uh, we start off with five inch squares, we cut into two dimensions of it. So the height is still the same, but the side gets shrunk down. I trimmed all these to four inches by four and three quarters. I'm really not trying to deal with the math of what that would take to add them here to then add borders that go across and then incorporate it down. I'm not here for that. It's just a baby quilt. So yeah. Uh, Carla says, I want to go on a sewing cruise, girl. I have no idea when we'll be able to go back on cruises, but I was glad that we got that one in February, literally before the world shut down. Okay. Um, Brandy says, I would quilt bubbles on it. That would look super cute. I, I do like the idea of switching things up, right? So if we have blocks here that have such um, kind of harsh angles, triangles, squares, rectangles like that, I do like to then incorporate something with more rounded and curved and spirals and bubbles and stuff like that on in the quilting when I do it. Um, I tend to do that a lot. So if it's a really round quilt, sometimes I'll go in and quilt like really blocky kind of uh, quilting on it just to kind of balance it out. I just like the way that that looks. All right, so let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Ashley Marker is asking, where did you get your shirt? I have no idea, but it is super comfy. It's like a dolman top made out of a, a sweater knit, like a lightweight sweater knit. I don't know. It's years old. Maybe Old Navy. I don't know. Okay, let's see. Uh, Ashley says, I have a habit of buying fabric just because. Ha, 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 ha. 
that's how I do it. I feel like there's two types of quilters. A lot of people either buy the fabric because they like it and they'll figure out what they'll use it for later, or some people have the exact project in mind and they go to the shop with the pattern and like find the fabric that they need for that project. I can't. I just build up a stash and then when the inspiration strikes at home, I just shop my stash, right? All right, let's see. Uh, oh, she says she loves the quilt behind me. Thanks. This is one that I taught years ago in, a, in my online quilt club. It's actually tied and it's a quilt as you go quilt. So another easy way. And that's another thing. If you're looking for different quilting techniques, just type in the YouTube search box, Crafty Gemini, quilt as you go. Crafty Gemini, hand quilting. Crafty Gemini, tie a quilt. Crafty Gemini, whatever it is, and those keywords, and you will find any videos that I've done over the years uh, that are posted right here to my YouTube channel. And just as a heads up, if you think you've watched a lot of my videos, you probably haven't seen them all. There's some of you out there that have, but I have over 500 video tutorials on my YouTube channel here. So definitely uh, spend some time in checking it out. Sarah McKay is asking, what are you going to back it with? Girl, you're getting too far ahead. I have no idea. Um, I don't know. I The way that I approach backing is a few different ways. One, Whatever I have, do I have a chunk that fits just perfect for this quilt? I don't really care. Maybe if it's just like a, a quilt that doesn't have to be matchy-matchy or it's not for a gift, I'll just throw whatever backing on it. For my own quilt, I often will throw something wild on the back, like that's not even part of the collection. Like, see, this goes, but it's not even, it's, it's, there are different collections. Um, I'm trying to see if I had any other quilts here to grab. But I just throw whatever. So this is a gift, so I probably won't just throw whatever. If the quilt is huge, and I don't want to be bothered with piecing a quilt backing, I will most often gravitate towards the wide backs, the 108 inch wide back fabrics that you can find so readily now across so many different manufacturers, they're making them. And they'll come, you know, with, with fun prints. Some of them are just plain solid, whatever it is. Sometimes if it's like a queen size quilt, I'm like, I'm just gonna grab this because I know it'll be wide enough to cover the whole thing. This one is a little bit different, right? It's not gonna be that big. It's a crib size quilt. As long as the dimensions, if, say one of the dimensions are shorter than 44, 42 inches, then I'll probably be able to just use the width of the fabric. I think I'm going to make it bigger than that, so that probably won't be the case. But there are some like wall hangings and mini quilts and stuff where that is the case. And then I just grab any fabric from my stash, you know, because it'll fit across the width. But for this, I mean, I'm not going to use a wide back, I don't think, because I don't have any wide backs that I think will go with this because it's a gift. I might just piece it, you know, in the, with the same kind of asymmetry in mind. Instead of just piecing it right down the middle with a horizontal seam of the exact same fabric on both panels, I may do scrappy backing. I'm a big fan of scrappy backings and scrappy bindings. If you haven't seen my quilts before, I tend to do that a lot. I like random pops of color and different things on the back. Because this is going to be for a baby and it's going to get a lot of use, I probably won't use something that's super light, so I know that. Um, if it was like a picnic quilt or something that I wanted them to like lay out on the grass or at the beach or whatever, then I would probably add a lightweight denim, which is my favorite, favorite go-to backing for picnic quilts. And um, you just got to make sure that it's lightweight, like a four ounce or five ounce denim is usually what I use for that. So it's like a lot of different things to think about, but the gift, a baby quilt, it's going to get used a lot and the bottom will probably get dirty. I'm going to lean towards something in my stash that is darkish and blends maybe like a, a grayish print charcoal print something oh i have a fabric here let me see what y'all think about this might be a little dark but still it would work and i don't have much of it left but i may have just enough to make the backing it's gray and white and it does have the same kind of the darker grays the charcoaly grays and the white lines very geometric. I might back it with that. Who knows, girl? But something along those lines as far as making a baby quilt for a gift so that it still matches but still makes practical and functional use. That's probably something along those lines is what I'll do. Thanks, Sarah McKay, for getting me to think all about that because I was definitely not on that page yet. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Chris says Minky on the back would be cool. That would be super cool, but I really don't feel like dealing with quilting through Minky on a quilt for Florida. Um, this is a gift for a friend, um, for a baby that lives in, in, in warmer climate, so it's not going to be, um, I'm definitely not going to throw Minky on this. Let's see. Um, Rosalind says, I love the hexagon quilt behind you. This one. 
I won this in a swap at my local quilt uh, guild meeting. My friend Laura actually made it. And we like make mini quilts for swaps and we pick numbers and I ended up picking hers twice. This, she made this one and she made this one too. Thank you, Laura. They're super cute. Uh, let's see. Oh, good. Sarah McKay says she likes that. Some of y'all are saying, yes, yes, you love that. That's a great choice. You see, that's how we do it. We shop the stash. I literally had the bolt there. I was like, hmm, that'd be cute. And that's how I like to um, work on my projects. Some of y'all are like, oh my gosh. So that tells you a little bit more about how I am in life in general. I'm not very much of a planner at all. All right. Bonita's asking, do you use a walking foot when sewing minky fabric? So I have long arm quilting machines. So I usually will quilt a quilt on a long arm machine. A little one like this, I could tackle just on a sit down machine, but it's like one of those things like, when you have a machine that has an automatic thread cutter and automatically lifts the presser foot for you, like, why would you use your vintage machine and be struggling? Um, so I have long arms, so I tend to use the long arms, but on minky fabric, let me think, have I ever quilted on minky fabric on a regular sit down? I would definitely use a walking foot, that's for sure. I would lengthen my stitch length, and I think I have, because I've sewn with minky before to make like simple blankets, not necessarily like free motion quilting, but simple straight line quilting, yes. And in those instances, absolutely use a walking foot and lengthen the stitch length. And when I've done that, I have also not used batting because it's just too many layers. Um, and the minky is quite thick on its own. So if you're going for like the warm feel of it and the coziness of it, you really don't need batting. But again, that's up to you. Patty says, are your YouTube videos in chronological order? Well, they can be. You can go to the channel page and select like most popular uploads. You can select by playlist. You can also select in order, in chronological order. All right. Let's see, any other choices? Good, I'm glad you guys, I, I think I will go with that. I have to obviously make sure to see that there's enough fabric on there to back this quilt, but I think there will be. All right, well, I'm gonna get busy ripping out this seam and cutting out some strips so that I can make this how I want it. I'm gonna go longer on top and bottom and narrower on this way, but I still wanna give it some substantial size, right? You can go really easily from like a crib size to a lap size just by adding a wider chunk, okay? So if you think this is gonna, and I've done this before, I'll mention. I've made baby quilts before where they're like a little size baby quilt for when they're little, little, and then once they outgrow it, it kind of fits perfectly as a wall hanging. So if you're planning for it to be used that way, then of course, you know, you can keep it on the smaller side. And that way when they outgrow it, they can always just, um, use it as like a little mat somewhere or just like as a wall hanging. So that's an option. But I kind of want this one for the baby to be able to grow with it a little bit more, at least until they're like four or five. Um, so I am gonna add some more height to it, for sure, this way. All right, well thank you all for tuning in. Kathy's asking, do you have videos for the very beginner like me? I have over 500 videos, Kathy. Type in on youtube.com, type in Crafty Gemini, beginner sewing videos, and a whole list of stuff that's perfect for you will pop right up for you, okay? So thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, thanks for asking me some questions. I'm glad I got to answer some of them and share some tips and kind of my design process with y'all. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this Whip Wednesday, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends on different social media sites. And then remember that we will be back this Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern for what we call either a live chat or a flash sale Friday. And then tune in next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern for another episode of Whip Wednesday. And hopefully I'll have some more progress made on this quilt with my finalized design layout that I can share with you then. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you all next time.